Okay, let's take a look at section 1.7, solving equations in one variable. Our two objectives are going to be to solve an equation containing just one variable and also to learn how to isolate a variable in a formula. First, we have to talk about a definition of a word called root. The root is any value of a variable that makes an equation a true statement. So you can think of this as the solution to the equation, and you've heard of that before. You find the solution or find the answer or the value of the unknown variable. We're also going to call that the root. Okay, the root. In the first example here, we have to start by distributing. So we get distribute this to both terms, distribute this to both terms. We're going to get 6x plus 15 equals negative 7x minus 63. <clears throat> now, at this point in time, we can do several things. I would probably just move over the variable terms to the left because I see it's a negative 7x. So let's add it. And at the same time, let's move the 15 over by subtracting 15. Cancel. Cancel. This is going to give us negative 78, and this is going to give us 13x. Now all we have to do is divide by 13, and we're going to get x equals negative 6. Check our answer, plug it back in the original. If we check our answer, we're going to get a value of negative 21 equals negative 21. So yes, it is true. Both sides of the equation are negative 21 when checked. In the second example, we're going to also have to distribute, but this is a little more work. So let's start with 5h minus 8 minus 2h, because I have to remember to distribute this to both terms. And that's going to be equal to 5 plus 3 plus 3h, again, because of distri the distributive property. At this point in time, let's collect terms on the left-hand side. We have a 5h minus 2h is going to be 3h, carry down the minus 8. And on this side, we're going to have, it looks like, 8 plus 3h. Well, now we're going to notice if you try to collect terms and subtract 3h from both sides, they're going to cancel, actually. So you're left with negative 8 equals 8, which is not true. It is absolutely not true, so we call this a contradiction. Now, because it's a contradiction, it means that there is no answer. So there's no solution, or an empty set, or an empty set like that. For number 3 here, we have to distribute again. Clearly, we're trying to hit that message home right now, 6m minus 9 equals 6m plus 6 minus 15. Well, this is the same thing on both sides. 6m minus 9 equals 6m minus 9. And because of that, what we're going to notice is that if we plug in any value for m whatsoever, the equation holds true. Try it. Try 2, try 3, try 4, try any value of m. Well, what does that mean for us? That means that the answer is just all real numbers. Okay, all real numbers. So m is in the set of all real numbers. Okay? It's our solution. We could say m is all real numbers. In example 4, we're told that the formula that relates the height and feet of a launched rocket t seconds after firing with an initial velocity v0 in feet per second is the following. h equals negative 16 t squared plus v0t. Now, v0 again is the velocity initially, and h is the height. So it says determine the initial velocity, or find v0, if the, ho if the rocket Oh, sorry, of the rocket, if it reaches a height of 40 feet after 2.5 seconds. So just because of my units, I know what I'm looking at. Look at the equation here, please. H, only thing that works for H is something in feet. The only thing that works for time is something measured in seconds. So I know what those variables are. I have to find V0, so I have to find this variable. So here we can really just plug right into this equation. So we'll take this equation here and plug in, we have h is 40, so 40 equals negative 16 times 2.5 squared plus v0 times 2.5. Well, in this problem, make sure you notice a negative 16 in front there, negative 16. In this problem, we're going to notice that if we simplify this, we're going to end up getting 40 
equals now we have to square this first then multiply by negative 16 that's negative 100 plus 2.5 v0 and I'm writing it that way so we see that 2.5 is really a coefficient if we add 100 to both sides now we're going to get 140 equals 2.5 v0 or v0 is simply 56 now Again, dividing by 2.5 there. Now, the thing is, what are the units of V0? Well, take a look at the problem. It's right up here. Here's your units of V0. And you can tell also, because height was in feet, and time was in seconds, so velocity's got to be in feet per second, instead of something like mile per hour. Okay, let's take a look at the last example here. And let's look at the note here. It says, in the next example, when solving an equation in terms of other variables, consider those variables to be constants. Consider those variables to be constants. Let's take a look. The volume V of a cone with height h and radius r is given by the formula V equals one-third pi r squared h. Solve this formula for the following. So we're asked to solve the formula for h and also solve it for r. Well, let's take a look. Part A. We want to get h by itself, so eventually we have to get this location by itself. So we need to get rid of everything that's here. Get rid of all of this. It's easy to get rid of a number in the front. In this case, it's a fraction, so we can just multiply by the reciprocal. Next, at this point in time, we have to start thinking about another type of equation we've seen like this before. This is what we're looking for. And up here in the note it said, when solving in terms of other variables, consider those variables constants. So we need to consider these both to be constants. Pi is definitely a constant, we know that. But we have to consider the term r squared a constant as well. So in this case, here's what I want you to think about. Let's make believe a little side note. If you had something that said, how would you get rid of the 2? 4 equals 2x. You divide by 2 and divide by 2. Because this is clearly a coefficient and then they cancel. Now, it's the same thing that's occurring over here. Same thing's happening. This is the coefficient right here. This is the variable we're looking for. This h is like that x over here. So we need to divide by pi r squared both sides. And what you notice is that these cancel and these cancel, leaving us just simply h equals this term right here, 3v over pi r squared. Let's take a look at part b now. That was, again, that was part a. Let's take a look at part b. For part b, we want to go ahead, start with our given formula, Again, get rid of the one-third by multiplying by three. But now we're trying to get r by itself. So let's go ahead and isolate r by rearranging it using our commutative law. And here we have... So I've just switched the order of these two variables because of the commutative law of multiplication. Now we can think of this as a coefficient because this is the variable we're looking for. So we think about this as the x from earlier, and this is the coefficient in front. So divide by pi h. Now the last step here is to think to ourselves, well, we really have to get r by itself, and it's not. So to get rid of a square, we have to take the square root. And it's 3v over pi h. Keep in mind to remember that when you take a square root of a number, you have to think about the fact that you usually get plus or minus as an answer here. But in this case, since we're looking for a radius, it's got to be positive. So we're not going to have to really worry about attaching a positive or negative sign in the front. Your homework for this section is from 1-7.
and then the self-test 2 on page 36, the even numbers from 2 to 12.